right, we are live. All right, pull up my dashboard, pull up my thread. All right. Main focus tonight is going to be knife edge spins. All right, let me test audio. Can you hear me now? There we go. What's up, Mr. Canova? Would you rather have a 52 inch Extreme Flight Slick or a 52 inch RC Gadget Slick? Cheers. Uh, you know, right now I'll take the RC Gadget Slick, man. It's just more my thing. I didn't want to build anything. It flies really well, takes the batteries I got. Um,. It's just a good plane for me to get back into doing all the 3D shenanigans. Now, you know, when I once once I feel back when I'm back to like the level I want to be, definitely, you know, Extreme Flight Slick would be something I'm looking at. Nice looking plane. Does it fly? Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, this is, I really, I've always liked this extra. I like the way it looks. I'm editing it right now, so no problem, Mr. Canova. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's like, you really can't go wrong with either, it's just, you know, a balsa plane is going to fly the precision, pro just, it's going to be better than a foam airplane, more than likely, like, you know, that's just going to be the name of the game. But I've really enjoyed the Slick, and I really like the MXS. I think I like the MXS more than the Slick, but I only have like five or six flights on it, so I can't really say for sure yet. Oh, I know what I need to do before this. Gonna edit this thing real quick. Um, here we go. Let's see. Where is it? Here we go. I don't know why it zooms in on the plane when I'm doing this. I'm sorry. Just the way the recording software picks everything up is kind of funky. I'm just changing all the strength multiplier values. Because I want to go over knife edge spins tonight because that was... There are a lot of questions in the uh, tutorial thread. So that's kind of one thing I want to look at. Let's see. Here we go. CG's off. CG's way off. Let's see how knife edge spins. There we go. Hey, we made it. CG's not that bad. I need a I need to just sit down one day and get my jetty radio hooked up and just figure all that out so I can fly with the jetty. But until then, we're gonna struggle with the real flight controller some more. It's not that bad, but let me know if everything sounds good. I did a check before, it should be all good, should be able to hear me. 
Let's see, have you ever used Aerofly? Real Flight seems way better, but I use a back. I want to assume Mac. So my only option is Aerofly. It's decent. I've never used Aerofly. Um, I don't. I don't really know who's like. I don't know who's like who owns Aerofly or anything either. It's kind of. They like every now and then I'll just hear about Aerofly and that they've come up with a new. Uh, come up with a new thing. So. I haven't used Aerofly. I. I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. It's. I don't think it can compare to Real Flight, but I. I will say like, Real Flight. The more I think about it, they've really made. You know all these. Uh, different ones so real flight three five eight whatever and i'll tell you what not much has really changed like if you go through the list of airplanes there is not anything and then if you want a bunch more you have to buy them so the more i think about real flight like i really enjoy the simulator i understand they got to make money but dang you you pay 200 bucks every year and a half two years like buying an iphone like that whole thing cg xyz with what do you move first i normally move let me see real quick. I think I normally move the Y direction. It probably depends on the airplane. But I normally move the Y. I've never really messed with Z or X, to be honest. Normally Y is what I normally do. Let's see how this does. It's just... Might be a trim thing. Okay. Still a little nose heavy. Oops. Yeah, we'll need to move that CG. Yeah, I know we start in the Y, because that's kind of like moving your battery forward and backwards, like in real life. Yo, why is my mouse freaking out? There we go. Uh, Y is... So we'll go 0.4. There we go. We moved it back a little bit. Just a hair too nose heavy. Kind of. Yeah, I was gonna use the yak like I usually do, but I just I couldn't get it to knife edge spin like I wanted, so I just kind of made a quick edit just for the knife edge spin, something that I know is gonna work for the night. Okay. Yes. Do you use a throttle curve? On the simulator, I do not. In real life, I use a throttle curve typically on a gasser, normally not uh, an electric airplane. Um, it really depends on the setup. Some are not going to need it. Some will definitely need it. I've had some gas airplanes where your throttle's like an on-off switch. And then some that kind of work them way to a nice range. And then It can be the same way for electric. Typically, I don't, though. Like on my, like on the RC, on the MXS and the slick I have now, I do not use throttle curves at all. Crack yak, no throttle curve. Would a smart person use one? Maybe I don't know, but that's just what I do. <laughs> all right, this thing's flying pretty good. All right, I like this. Real flight CG takes a lot to make a change. Five plus just to be close. Huh. I moved it point. I try not to move too much at a time. Just, whoa, okay, that was funky. But if I don't find something I like, I'll do a bigger change. And by the way, what's up, K Match? I wish real planes could you just do this too. Do you use a high idle? Yes. 
um, on a gas airplane, definitely use a high idle. On some electrics, I've used a high idle. So pretty much typically anything over like a 30cc electric, I'd run a high idle. The smaller stuff I've never really had an issue with until you get to like foamies and some foam airplanes like my crack cack i don't use a high idle but some probably lower end escs will it'll definitely help to have a high idle switch let's see uh, we'll do I just moved the CG way back, so we'll see how that goes. It's still weird. It's still just like pushing itself into the ground. I don't know if that's like a trim thing or what. This thing rolls super fast. It's kind of ridiculous. Okay. This isn't the airplane I'm going to fly most of the night, but I wanted to have something. Alright, I think my roll rate is a little high. <laughs> Let's see how it snaps. Yeah. This thing's weird. I used to have a really good edit for 6.5, but that isn't a thing anymore. Alright, let's try a knife edge spin. That's no good. That's just the wings. Boom. Your wing visual is off. I don't know what that means, man, to be honest. Probably is, though. Like I said, I'm just trying to get something close out of my fetch bank consistently. They don't go back to the act. Let's go back here. Yeah. All right, let's try this again. Too much elevator, and it's just not like it. What the heck? All right. Um, delete. Whatever. That'll work for now. Oh, on that plane, I use a rudder aileron mix. See, like, that's the thing about some of these things. It's like, it's not... I don't want to spend eight hours trying to get something that flies overall well. It's just ridiculous. You've had eight tries to get the physics better. It's not too bad. But I definitely want to go into knife edge bin tonight once things get rolling. So kind of warming up. It's a little much, I don't know, but just probably me. Yeah, because knife head spin, you can do it like so many ways. Like, there's about a billion ways to enter it. So, I've been looking at planes in the market for 60cc size. I know I said last time I was getting out of that size, but I haven't had much luck selling the engine I have, and I don't want to let it go for, like, stupid cheap. So, I was looking at the uh, Flex Innovations 70cc, 60cc biplane, and then AJ Aircraft just came out with, or announced their, um, what is it, their Raven, which I thought looked kind of cool. 
I need to decide like what I actually want to do. Once I get a bigger airplane, because I'm not gonna be buying a 100 cc, but I can definitely see a 50 cc if I don't get rid of the engine I want. I mean, I'd love a DA70 or uh, is there a DLE 70? I need to look into that. I might just roll up one of them or a GP. I don't know about GP engines. I might look at one of those too. But the biplane looks really cool. I like biplanes. I know it's not gonna be like the perfect 3D airplane, but flex looks cool. But don't get high praises for true 3D. Yeah, I mean it's a biplane though. It's not gonna be some. It's gonna do some stuff super well, and then it, it is gonna be garbage at some stuff. I think that's kind of part of the risk with it. I don't think you're gonna make a perfect one. I think part of the thing is like I just want a biplane. But I haven't really looked into it. I'll take your word for it though. As long as it pork rolls and like does low rolling harriers well, I'll be happy. Because that's all I want that plane for. <laughs> Biplanes are the coolest thing to do low rollers with. You just can't can't touch it. Mama best choice of theirs, I think. Is that the smaller like 16 size? I haven't paid attention to too much of their stuff. I know they came out with a cap, which is kind of funny. The only thing that worries me about Flex Innovations planes, and I'm just going to be like brutally honest here, is if you sell an airplane with a gyro built in, I'm just assuming that that airplane is pretty much garbage. Um, if there's one thing I've learned is you can make a kind of crappy airplane fly pretty good with a gyro, but I'd rather a plane be designed without a gyro. I'm just saying. Mamas are by all sizes. Oh, okay, that, that might be the one I'm thinking. I know I don't want their yak. Their 50cc yak or whatever, that's gonna be a hard pass. But then I saw the AJ Raven, and I was like, that's, that's pretty cool too. You get the choice of two wings, but I think everyone's just gonna get the XA wings, the precision wings, so it doesn't matter. So many planes, so little time. I have some more video of the Crack Yak and the NXS going up next week too. So. I just know like my next 50 CC is gonna involve, you know, I wanna do a big build video and all that stuff. So I wanna, you know, pick one out that's not just like already out there all over the place. Do you think the E Flight Slick 480 is a good plane or should be avoided? If I recall, I've flown that thing. It was a while back. You know, buying an E-Flight Slick 480 is kind of like buying off-brand ice cream. You still get ice cream, and it's going to be good. But you could have, like, really good ice cream from, like, the best ice cream place if you wanted. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I think it's probably a good plane, but I think you could do better. I don't see I don't see why you'd buy a slick an e-flight slick if there's an extreme flight slick right next to it. There's just no point. Unless that's the gear you have to go in it, then you know. That's you. I think for what it is, it's not bad though. I think they did a decent job. But it's been a while since I've flown that, I'm pretty sure. Unless you don't like ice cream, and in that case, then get whatever you want. <laughs> All right, sweet is eight. I'm trying to think of what else to go over for the stream, so we're definitely gonna look at some knife edge spins. Um, Lomsha Fox was Lomshavok was a big deal in the thread, and I still I'm still trying to figure out you know what what exactly is a Lomshavok? What's gonna be a crankshaft? What are the you know you know? There's no definition there. I think that would be a cool thing to define. Though I, I think, I think I'm gonna try in this stream and maybe point out two key things. Of what kind of makes them different, or two different ways to do it, really. But I think that's the two things we're gonna touch on tonight. I'm not gonna stream super long tonight because I gotta work Saturday, which means I need extra rest this week, which is a bummer. 
bummer, man. Also, uh, Park Flyer Freestyle Contest is over. Um, we had 20 pilots enter. I'm super happy. The judging is going on right meow. So look out for the winners of that coming soon. Probably going to be about a week, week and a half. I'll have the video up that has all the winners. And it's going to be a really well done video. So I'm really happy. If you guys didn't know what the Park Flyer Freestyle competition, competition is, check out the Facebook group or check out the RC Groups thread. Um, we had some really good talent, you know, really show up. There's definitely some people who put a lot of time and effort into it. But there will be more. So if you missed out this time, there will be more. Um, so definitely look out for that. But I'm hoping it will keep building. We got 20 pilots for the first, and that was the first time doing it in, like, a couple years so I'm hoping I'm hoping the next one will get you know 25 30 found out the crankshaft is its own move that follows the long shot thing yeah I think that's kind of what we're saying that the crankshaft is kind of a long shot vodka is just a very broad term for kind of a, a that certain tumble everyone kind of knows what that tumble is but it's definitely the broad term and then the crankshaft I think is where you add an extra rudder input try to get it to really spin around the wing that's kind of our main that is the uh, 3d tutorial threads call as of now <laughs> that could change though let's see here let me check this one last thing all right cool exactly okay so knife edge spin I know some people I think we're having trouble with going into a flat spin afterwards and then I think that was one of the issues and then the different ways you can enter it the main two ways I've kind of not taught I don't want to sound like a professor or anything but the main two ways I've kind of explained it is one is just entering it from a straight down line um, two is kind of like doing a stall turn into it which it essentially it's the same thing but um, it is two different ways to do it now other ways are um, Daniel Holman has done some different entries into the knife edge spin. What's up, fiery afterburner? Um, Daniel Holman's kind of done some different things to enter the maneuver. Which, if you go back and watch one of the past streams where we were watching freestyles, we kind of hit that. Um, but yeah, knife edge spin. And also, you can do it in technically both directions. So you can normally you see people pushing with the elevator. So they're pushing on the stick when you can also do it while pulling on the elevator. It's, it looks really silly, but um, definitely possible. And I think it looks cool. I think Kale Spicer in the Park Flyer Freestyle Competition did it. And it looks sweet. So shout out to that, bro. That was cool. I haven't, I haven't judged all the flights yet, so bear with me. So I can't tell anyone what they got or who's winning. Okay, so let's see here. Try, trying to figure out where to start. All right, well, let's do straight down line. Okay, do this. Okay, well, let's turn the speed down for a little bit. I promise we won't stay in slow land forever. All right, so uh, we're probably gonna need more height than that. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get more height. That's not gonna work. Actually, what I'll do is I'll move this down here. I'm trying to make it to where everyone can see, but also still have enough room to do the maneuvers. So this will be tricky. All right, we'll we'll hope this works. Okay, that should give us enough room. We're gonna do a lot of crashing into the ground though. Okay, so knife edge spin. We're gonna start like trying to just go straight out of a downline into a knife edge spin, and this is gonna be a hard one to talk through. So bear with me, but it, it's not really about the talking. It's about seeing the stick movements. The sticks kind of speak for themselves rather than what I have to say because. 
the knife head spin is one of those maneuvers you'll do and do over and over until it's second nature and you'll make the corrections automatically and there's no like okay wait for this do this so let's so if I'm doing knife head spin you know this is the basic maneuver there we go you can kinda see it get in there slow speeds kinda weird but that's how we're gonna look at it start with the sticks in the upper corners there's a little bit of an aileron input and then you're holding that rudder this isn't a really good one but you can see I, I can kind of adjust that angle with my aileron input and get the wings more level so a full throttle I initiate like a tumble and then I'm kind of working that input just a little bit so you kind of missed it there that was a bad one so I initiate a tumble and you can feed in that aileron and sometimes you can work your way off the rudder some airplanes I've found just you don't have to have as much rudder sometimes you don't sometimes you need all of it it really depends um, I found like the MXS that I'm flying right now you do not need all the rudder that thing has a ton of rudder use all the rudder you don't you don't need it you could you could use half probably so that's what I normally do if I'm going from a straight down line you can kind of start with the tumble because we just hold this this is it's kind of a tumble, not really, but we'll call that a tumble. This position right here, that's normally how I start a knife edge spin. So we'll hit the tumble, and then you can feed in that aileron input, and now you're kind of, you're moving the wings a little bit. Um, didn't keep enough momentum that one. Let's build up a little bit more momentum this time. So down, tumble, aileron input, and we're now in a knife edge spin. This isn't a really good one, but... It's kind of hard to do slow speed, but that's that's the area you're in. Like your sticks are going to be up in this corner, and you're going to be kind of working it. Um, you can also do pull. So instead of pushing with the with the with the uh, elevator, I mean, you can actually do a pull maneuver, which it looks kind of funny. So we'll do the same thing. So a pull is going to be let's see. There we go, it's gonna be that. So, get some input. Uh, there we go. So you can pull and also do the spin while with up elevator. I'll do another one. So here we go. Uh, oh, that was wrong rudder, my bad. Here we go. And you same thing, you gotta adjust your aileron input a little bit. So pretty much same maneuver except opposite aileron or opposite elevator. I'll do another one. So tumble, aileron input, you're now doing a knife pitch spin other way. Except we're like gonna crash into ourselves right now, so um you can also change, so you can do like a knife edge spin like this, and then work your way into uh, the up elevator version so give me a sec so you'll be doing this and then you can kind of go right back into the other direction and then back into the other direction that's a really cool way to do it by the way I'll do some full speed I just want to break each individual part down for now um, so let's talk about so that's going from a downline which it's all essentially going to be the same thing um, a wing over like if you do a stall turn it's gonna be a little bit of different because you don't have as much speed um, in some cases you'll see like someone already have the rudder hit so they'll be flying sideways and then they just push with the elevator and they're already in the knife edge spin and I will say um, when you're trying these most airplanes won't take that much aileron input so just bear that in mind so we'll go back to normal speed mode and this is gonna be awful by the way ow all right, let's get back on the ground safely and do some normal ones. So I'll do them at full speed now. All right, we're in full speed mode. So I'm gonna just do a normal knife edge spin. I'm actually gonna do a wing over, so that's what I mean. Stall turn, that's a really bad one, but tumble, aileron input. Now we're doing kind of a knife edge spin. There we go, almost at it. Do another one. I don't know why this airplane doesn't like it that much, but so stall turn 
tumble, night bed spin. There we go. And you're good. And then I'll do one of the other way. So tumble. Oh, my bad, wrong rider. Whoops. Alright, here we go. Uh, nope, didn't have a bite there. I've always found it easier. I, I like never practice it by itself. I normally just transition from one to the other, so I'll go up, do a knife edge spin, and then do the opposite knife edge spin, and then go back to the normal knife edge spin. That's one of those things like you practice it one way, but if you break the maneuver down, you ended up kind of screwing yourself up. So that's kind of a bad habit. Okay, so now we'll do... Um, so now we'll try and transition from a knife edge spin into like an inverted flat spin, which is, a, you know, it's a pretty common thing. So let me, I want to do low. All right, so we're going to be pretty low right there. All right, cool. So we're going to break down the speed again. All right, we're now slow-mo. So knife edge spin. Ah, we're not quite high enough. Sorry about that. Gain altitude again. Okay. Stall turn. Ugly stall turn. Okay, there we go. Right, we'll go super slow for these, so. Knife edge spin, and then when you go into an inverted flat spin, you kick the rudder opposite and stay on the, uh, d the down elevator and just feed in that aileron input to kind of flatten yourself out. That's all it takes. And typically when I'm doing this, so I'm going to gain some speed, I'll be in a knife edge spin and I'll wait till I'm like right about there. So when the uh, tail is facing away from me, or the t tail is facing towards me, transition rudder and then go into the flat spin. The main thing is if you're missing these, look at the input you're giving right before you're trying to get into the spin. If you're not giving the input for an inverted flat spin, it will never work. In inverted flat spin, you're just going to be, you're just doing this. Full elevator, full rudder, working the ailerons just a little bit every now and then, and you're going to be spinning. Notice how you're spinning around the CG, the airplane. That's really the goal in a spin like that, but that's a whole other deal. <laughs> but I'll do a couple more. So, going down, tumble. Now we're going to transition to a knife edge spin. And now we're going to go inverted flat spin, opposite rudder, a little bit of aileron to flatten out. And we're good. And if you're cool, this would be pretty epic. I'm just saying. I'm trying to think if there's any other ways to look at it. So you could come out in an upright flat spin, or just a normal flat spin. So knife edge spin, same thing. You're just gonna hold up elevator this time. It's really not that difficult. The main thing is, you know, knowing when to kind of start it. So. If I'm doing a knife edge spin, I'm kind of looking for, okay, how's my airplane coming out? I want to start my flat spin there because my, my canopy is already up when I pull up on the elevator. So that should kind of answer some of that knife edge stuff that was in the thread. Hopefully you all might have found that somewhat usable. But knife edge spins are cool. They take practice, though, and different airplanes are going to do them better. Like, I've had some airplanes that just hate it. Not necessarily hate it. All of them will do it. But some will definitely get that rotation much easier. I think in the thread, one thing that people talked about was moving your CG forward or back. That can definitely help because the knife fetch spin is going to rotate around the CG, technically. That's the way I look at it. Um, the CG is way more important than people realize. Like the CG center of gravity and your center of lift, like those two things. So the center of gravity is where all your tumbles and stuff are based around. In my basic understanding of aeronautics and all that fun stuff, but CG is important. So if you're having trouble, maybe try moving your CG a little bit. That can also help. So let's reset here. 
trying to think. So, I think next up was doing some Lom, Lom Shavak. So, I'm going to call this from now on a Lom Shavak. Lom Shavak is this. Now, that was kind of stupid. I held on the throttle the whole time, but that's. It's, it's a tumble. It's a tumbling maneuver. It's not really supposed to have a specific, you know, look to it. If you do it and let off the throttle, you know, it kind of flattens out a little, a little bit. Now, the crankshaft, from what I've been seeing, is more of this. So, you'll do your launch rock and throw in the extra rudder input, so now you're giving the opposite rudder. And you are basically doing a knife edge spin at that point. Or a type of knife edge spin, I should say. That's kind of the difference. I think that's kind of what we decided what the difference between those two is. But a Lomschwach can be a bunch of things. I mean, I would call that a Lomschwach. I'm pretty sure the Lomschwach means headache or hangover, which I totally understand. I can't imagine doing that in real life. That'd be awful. Oh, my phone went off. Sorry about that. So I think that's kind of it for the, the meat of this particular uh, stream as far as what I definitely wanted to cover. Hopefully that might might solve some questions, get some answers, might start more questions, who knows. But I think that's a pretty good way to look at knife edge spins. I know one way, I know Daniel Holman, so in one way Daniel Holman entered a knife edge spin. He was, I think he was flying, he was flying left to right. And he was holding rudder like this. And then he just went into it like that. He literally just nose, gave it that full down elevator input. And you're already pretty much there. Um, that's definitely a way you can do it. Actually, I'll slow that down in a sec. I'm trying to be more sparse with the slow motion stuff, so... Okay. So Daniel was flying left to right like this, and he kind of slowed down. So he was already giving a rudder input, and he just pushed into the knife edge spin, into the tumble, and then already worked on that aileron input. So that's kind of how other people can enter. That's definitely going to be more di more difficult, though. That won't be easy. Definitely won't be easy. That was cool. I'm trying to think if there's any other shop talk I wanted to talk about too. In Funnel Hover, I can't get the plane to spin around the CG. Okay. See, I, I did see something about that too. Thanks, Santa Mike. See, I saw this thing where people were talking about, so funnel hover, it's supposed to be the spin around the, the knife edge spin, or the, the CG, and then it, there's, you know, my original interpretation of funnel hover is, it doesn't really matter exactly what the airplane's doing, as long as you're making that general, you know, hovering motion. So right here, are we calling that around the CG? Just for giggles. Or we want to get, like, Tighter. What do you guys think? Because you know you could say, "Oh, ouch!" You could say like a funnel hover. You could be doing like you know something like this, where you're just kind of flying in a circle really fast. But really, you want to be up in this kind of orientation, which I wouldn't call that a funnel hover almost, but. If you're having trouble getting your airplane to spin around the CG like that, um, I would definitely try watching. Uh, that's another kind of thing. You can move the CG forward and back, and it will definitely help. I, I want to say that the farther back your CG is, probably the easier it's going to do that maneuver since your rudder pivots around the CG. Yeah, you're going to need a lot of elevator and some airplanes so let's so like my 104 slick I have the OG 
104, you know, 100cc slick. It was one of those you could literally just pin the sticks in the corner pretty much and just change the ailerons, and that was it. That's all you had to do. Where is a as planes like, let's say, I think it was I think it was my 58 inch edge. The 58 inch edge, you didn't need near as much elevator. You could get away with like, it would almost do it with that much amount of elevator. Which, you know, this is kind of a funnel hover, but you're definitely not there. But a lot of the funnel hover has to do with how you angle the wings with this aileron input. So you can flatten it out a little bit, or you can tighten it up a little bit with that aileron input. So definitely work on that aileron input. That can, that can cause, that can make or break how your funnel hover looks. And of course, having a ton of power makes it super easy. You know, DA120 was always just... Any airplane with the DA120 that wasn't a billion pounds could do a funnel hover pretty well. It's funny, when that maneuver like first got big, that maneuver got big, Joe Smith did it at the Jonal demo in 2012. If you haven't watched that video, you should. It's probably one of the best demo flights of all time. Um... You know, he did this funnel hover super low to the ground. It was like the first time like it people had really seen it. I mean, it it it'd probably been done before, but this was at you know center stage, Joan All, 2012, and uh, everyone's like, "What is this maneuver?" It's like that's got to be so hard. Like, look what the airplane is doing, and all of us are just like, "All you do is put the sticks in the corner with the 104 slick, and you're good to go." That's a great video, by the way. If you haven't seen that, it's probably the best demo flight of all time. Like, don't even try and argue. That was an epic demo flight. I don't think anyone has ever put on that much of a show. Like, that was, like, it was epic. Like, I can't even describe it. I wasn't there for that one, though. Like, I remember the day uh, it happened because everyone who wasn't there was like, Yo, did you hear about this flight? what what this flight was amazing Hugo crap what is up what is going on you don't know Hugo he's he's an OG original gangster pilot biggest tip for inside rollers okay I've been trying to work on these as well too so I guess when you say inside rollers like rolling left and making a left circle like this Or right, uh, is that kind of what we're looking at? Just want to make sure before I do the wrong thing. It's like rolling left, turning left, rolling right, rolling right. I wish. No, you're you're one of the OGs. You you've already been named an OG. You're an OG. Sorry for clicking the pin. I need to put it down. <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing, I guess, for those, either way with rollers, been practicing iMac inside rollers, which seems to help. Yeah, that's definitely a good way to do it. I mean,. 90 degree turn with one roll. Oh. Man, you you just had to pick the stuff I suck at. No, but um okay. Let me try one real quick so we can just get this out of the way. So I'm just going to pre-apologize for everyone watching. So inside roller, so we want to turn into the circle or out of the circle. Okay. Alright, so rolling in. So like this, where you're rolling into the circle. See, I cut that last bit short, like usual. Yep, okay. Yeah, those are, uh, those are a blast to practice. You know, I think the thing with those is... That's a one roll 360. One roll 90. One roll 90. So you're doing like a full roll like 
here. One roll, 90 degrees. Oh lord. Yeah. So like the first, you're doing a roll every quarter then. Sorry about that. I swear I'm not bad at math. That's it. Okay. Those are tough. Like that's really tough. Mostly because I don't think I've ever like just sat down and practiced those. Okay. Let me let me use all my brain cells for a sec. Think about this. All right. So if you're gonna do a full roll all the way around. See, that's that's a bad example. That's really bad. When you think you have it, then you should try it starting from inverted. <laughs> oh my lord. Not cool. All right, let me try another one real quick. Wrap my head around this. All right. You gotta roll faster than you think, too. That's a tough one. I like that one. I might have to, I might have to come back to it, but I'll I'll practice it now for sure. Oh, that was bad. I mean, I guess the main part of that is like, for me, like just looking at it, like as who hasn't really broken it down probably enough, you know, when I look at like a one roll, 300 and like, let's say we're doing a, a 360 degrees in one roll. So I know when I get to my first quarter, I want to be a knife edge. When I know when I'm all the way away from me, I want to be inverted. I know when I'm all the way to the other side, I want to be back in knife edge. And I know when I'm back at me, obviously, I want my wings to be level. So it's like probably kind of finding that same reference, except on 90 degrees. So when you're at 45 degrees, when you're halfway through that quarter, you want to be inverted. And then pacing that. That's probably what I would start to do. So before I even try and get all the way to the, uh, you know, to the 90 degree mark, I want to make sure I'm at the right spot halfway through. See, these are these are too fast. I would feel like, yeah. I do use full aileron and rifle rolls. But when you're learning, you can definitely turn it down to cheat. Like half throttle, half aileron, start there. Much better. All right, I'm going to try a couple more of these. These are hard. These are really hard. Are you going to go to the iMac event they're doing in Knoxville this year, Hugo? See right there, like I do pretty much half of that roll, you know, not, not in the right spot. Like it's not even close. Let's try it again. Nope. Yeah, I have to look at those. That's a hard one, man. Like, the IMAX stuff is not my forte. Because every time you learn something, it's like exactly what you said. Okay, learn a 90 degree one roll turn. Okay, now start inverted. And it's just like your mind is blown instantly. That's going to bug me too. stick to the easy stuff, you know, like 3D flying. Yeah, 
yeah, I'd say that that's a maneuver that stumps me. I don't think I'm qualified to really give any pointers too much. I mean, that's that's how I would try and go about it, though, because right there, like, I've already messed up. There's no point. If I try it again, I'm going maybe this direction. That was a little better. I do this crap because I can't fly straight and level. Exactly. Yeah, this is real flight 8. Is there... What what iMac routine has the uh, circle? Because I was looking at, I think, the intermediate or basic one. I didn't think it had that, but I never really did iMac. I think iMac has its flaws in some ways. Only saw those upper level iMac. What up, Cody? If you guys don't know Cody, he's an awesome pilot. Does a lot of stuff for designing for Twisted. He's the man. I already have Real Flight X. Is there any benefit to buying 8 also? I've heard Real Flight X is awful. Like, I really have heard Real Flight X is really bad. You probably benefit from getting 8, but it does suck to, I mean, I don't understand why Real Flight would do that kind of like change up go but are the 8 physics better than 7.5 if you have 7.5 save your money like uh, unless all your buddies have 8 and you want to fly in line but I don't think it's probably worth it that hundred bucks could go somewhere else real flight X is like an introductory version with a different engine Yeah, I, I really don't think that 7.5 to 8 is worth it. X was a game. Others to learn with a bit of a... I, yeah, I, th I, I didn't look into it. I know they had, like, probably more of the scenario stuff and, you know, maybe appeal to the gaming audience, but I don't know. Yeah, 8 does have that. I actually haven't tried to hook up my uh, Fry Sky yet, or Free Sky, whatever you, whatever it's called. I haven't tried hooking it up yet, but it do, it does have that. That's how I use my jetty, or how I have attempted to use the jetty. Free Sky. See, why don't they just spell it like that, man? You know, I'm from the South. You gotta spell it like you want it said. Yeah, I mean, if that that might be a reason to upgrade for sure. But if it's just for physics, nah, don't, don't do it. I I do plan on making a video about the jetty versus the the free sky radio. I mean, if I were to get into the hobby today, I'd buy free sky, no problem. If I were to be flying 100 cc airplanes only I'd still probably only have a free sky I would I wouldn't have the x7 though do you like spectrum transmitters I've never been a spectrum fan but the best pilot in the world uses spectrum so I don't think you can knock it too much I really think that there's not one best radio brand at this point they're all pretty good it's just how much do you want to spend on receivers that kind of stuff. You'll have some diehards say, you should only fly to Futaba because, you know, that's how my ancestors flew. And it's like, well, not anymore, bro. I think you really can't go wrong. Spectrum has some things that is really nice. 
They have all the bind and fly stuff. They have, you know, I think this new one they have has like some drone stuff that's kind of cool, but in the end, does it really matter? Yeah, exactly. What's the best car? Well, I have a Jeep, and I think Jeeps are the best, but you might drive a Mercedes or a Lamborghini, so. I haven't seen many using the, uh, that radio you have. I haven't seen many using that, but I have seen a bunch using, like, the the original that has the old JR930 whatever case, and that's totally fine. I like that radio. I like that case. It's a good design. You could totally use it for 3D. The X7, no. X7, do not buy an X7 if you want, want it for 3D flying. I learned that the hard way. Great radio. Great bang for the buck but not not for 3D. You can definitely tell uh, they didn't think all the ergonomics of that radio through. I love my high tech Aurora 9. I the high tech Aurora 9 was cool. Back when it originally came out, I there was a latency thing that some people say is a big deal, some people don't. But it was a good radio. A lot of people liked it. And high tech makes good stuff. They they do a pretty good job of taking care of their their customer. I don't think there's any radio brand I dislike. I don't see why you'd be flying like Garoppner though. Like straight up Garoppner radio. Or Tactic. I think what would be cool would be to set up a 3D airplane with like 72 megahertz stuff and old servos. Like put all that in like a 60 inch slick. And then give it to Jace to see and be like, all right, let's see how good we can make this airplane look on the, all this old equipment. I think that'd be a cool experiment. Like an old Futaba box radio. Or like an old, like, Seagull Edge 540 or something. Oh, that was bad. Unreal Flight 7.5, what model would you recommend for grinding practice on? There's some really good variants made by people who are not me. Pick up any of those. I know one's like an extra made by... His name's Joseph, Joseph S. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. That's apparently really good. Um, kept a gold case for Taba AM with three pin servos in my trailer. Yeah, like let's let's get one of those on a 3D airplane and see how it goes. New Tactic radios that come with real flight feel cheap. Tactic has always been cheap, man. Great service with the high tech receivers, very well priced. I do like the Free Sky. Yeah, I've been using Jace's edit to the extra. That's probably, I mean, that's probably the holy grail right there. And if anyone's kind of showed up like recently or late, we have, uh, I already hit knife edge spin tonight, so when this video gets uploaded to YouTube, it will be set. Um, see, that's the bad thing about Roflet 8 too. None of the 7.5 variants work, and no one's really put in the time to make one that's really good, and I, I just don't know how it all works. Give him a Futaba Conquest. Futaba makes a good radio. The 8FG, I loved. I loved my 8FG. I still have an old DX7 that I used to use back in the day. Like the original DSM2 DX7. That was a good radio. I wish everyone would quit kind of trying to copy like Jetty's look and stick with stuff like that. I mean, Spectrum does a good job. They definitely have theirs defined.
Ooh. Ow. I have the eighth. E flight slick 580 V2 is a favorite of mine on real flight. I love the ergonomics. Yeah, the, the 8FG just was really, like, it was a light radio. It never was, like, a pain to hold in your hands. Really good. Anyone have the Spectrum iX7? That radio looks cool. I don't know, Cody, if you're still there, when are you going to release some cool new uh, Twisted Hobbies designs for everyone? I feel like there's something cool coming soon. I've been seeing more videos like the the crack camel and the, the biplane or the triplane. I think those look neato. There's got to be a new Cody Logic design in the works. Yeah, man, no new foamies for ages. Nope. One thing I didn't know is a fancy foam is still around, which is surprising because fancy foam was like the foam company for a while. Like ETOC, most people were flying a fancy foam thing for a while. They're still around. I didn't know that. It randomly popped up on a Facebook ad. When are the How To 3D T-shirts coming out? I don't have a clue about that. That is, that's not me. Any thoughts on the new Hobby King Avios Extra 330 for a foamy 3D plane? I mean, I'm just gonna be straight up honest. It looks like pure trash. Like I know Hobby King like might be trying, but I'm just not about to even think about that airplane being good. I mean, it just, it literally looks like they're just trying to get, it looks like an extreme flight plane a little bit. I don't know why it's being, I don't know. It looks like pure garbage. Hobby King, you should send me one so I can prove how garbage it is. I'd love to do that. I might, like, I'd love just to buy one and just show how garbage it is. If you're going to want to foamy, get the RC gadgets or something else. Skywing makes good stuff though. Skywing does make some good stuff. I wish some models were reborn, such as the US company called Airfoils. I don't know about that. Uh, I think I remember them. Tech One? Tech One was a big one. Just for Skywing 55, when the Avos came out, I was surprised by their hardware choice. Thing is, like, what's up, Harrison? Dude, you should have come indoor flying with us this past weekend. Like, the, the main thing that separates, like, Hobby King from Extreme Flight and any decent company is you can tell, like, when something is thought out rather than, hey, we have this foam mold and we're just going to put whatever we have into it and then sell it. You can just tell. Like, I'm sorry, but I just, the only thing I would ever think about getting from Hobby King is, like, some cheap batteries or maybe some drone or 3D printing stuff. But other than that, it's going to be a nada. And, I mean, one of my favorite things is the, uh, the Michael Wargo planes. Don't get me started on those. I won't comment any farther than that. It just makes me lol every time. When you flying, uh, I might fly this weekend, like Sunday. 
But I, uh, next time they do the indoor fly-in, I'll, I'll hit you up, Garrison. Hey, now. I'll hit you up for when we do indoor. I know uh, there's a decent crowd. It was a huge gym. We had three full gyms. Just like pretty much to ourselves. So I just would go down and fly in my own little corner. So I didn't like mid-air anybody. Because apparently things have gotten heated in the past. Yeah, I'll definitely let you know. Uh, there are probably no one out at the field, too, and there's some cool obstacles for you guys at the field. Just depends, too. If it's too cold, I probably won't go out. When I went and filmed the MXS video, I nearly froze to death. Like, I'm surprised you can't see me shiver. Hey, man, it's all about the brand. If you have a brand, might as well use it, but you won't see me doing anything related with Hobby King. They could pay me... 50k a year and I'd be like nah bro it hurt me on the inside but I'd still say no what is your cutoff for wind speed I can't do 3d in a 10 mile per hour wind there is no cutoff for wind speed I really I used to be kind of the same way I used to try and like you know I'm only gonna go out if it's a nice day but learning to fly in the wind, just it makes you so much of a better pilot. Like, dude, I would definitely recommend just going out there and just learning how to fly in the wind. No, okay, if I got a tailwind or downwind or if the plane's coming at me, like, learn to fly in that and you'll get so much more enjoyment. It sucks sometimes, it does. Like, I've been out there and you'll be flying in like a 15 to 20 mile per hour wind. You feel like you can't do anything. And then after a while, you're, it's just going to be like nothing's there. A while back was found out that some Hobby King Turnigy motors the exact same, same factory as the equivalent hacker motor, so you never know what you'll find on there. Yeah, I mean, Hobby King likes to steal stuff. They, I'm not going to say steal, but there's only so many factories making all this stuff, so there's going to be overlap at some point. But I just can't support. They stole 3D Hobby Shop schemes when I was on Team 3D Hobby Shop, and ever since then it's just like I can't get behind any airplane. Every now and then a couple batteries, that's all I try and do. And it's funny because I was going to give them another chance and I ordered all the stuff from them and it came two months late. Literally came two months, two months late and I was like, well, at that point I had ar already ordered brand new good gear and I realized it's not just not going to happen. We're not, it's not going to happen. Oh, I seen a cool maneuver this week. It's on Skywing 61 at Slick 360 Flight 2. What like what's what's it look like? I don't have like a separate thing set up for watching other videos, but I'm still working on the setup. I need to get a webcam again. That's my next priority. And then I'll go for dual monitors so I can do stuff like that. It's just way easier with two monitors. I used to have two monitors, but I need to get another decent one. Yeah, it is right though, like, go fly out in some 50 mile per hour winds. Any advice for wind flying? See, I, I've been trying to think about how to do video on that. And I definitely will at some point, I promise. But for now, let's see. Um, You know, flying in the wind, so let's say the wind, actually, can I put wind on real flight? Is that a thing? Uh, effects, challenges, environment, wind, speed. Oh, okay. Let's do this. We've got a 15 mile per hour wind. I don't know what direction it is. Okay, there we go. So let's say the wind's blowing like this. So <clears throat> if it's blowing like down the runway in either direction, left to right, right to left, the main thing was that is so I'm going downwind now so when I come upwind this is gonna be good for like high alpha knife edge like 
if it's turbulent, you're going to push in and out, but you can still, you know, fly in the wind like this. You can see me now going downwind, it's going to be a lot more hairy. So that's kind of the main thing is know when you're flying into the wind and you'll be okay. You know, rollers into the wind, I really like. It's a good way to practice them, to be honest. Um, you know, if you're flying in the wind like this and you're going to like do some hovers, you're just going to know that you're going to drift away. And that's just going to be part of the game, which kind of that's going to suck. But you know, downwind stuff. You know, you just got to be careful when you're going downwind. Uh, it can really bite you in the butt. So if you're flying into the wind, just be wary of I'm going into the wind at this point, or if I'm going downwind. You know, you'd be surprised how a headwind can actually make some stuff easier, or you won't really tell. You'll just be going a little slower. You know, if you're going to do a big snap maneuver. You know, be careful, you know, just know that if you're going downwind, you're going to carry, you might have more speed or less airspeed, or if you're going into the wind, you're going to hit the same thing. Now, at my flying field, it's really awesome because the direction is, uh, let's see, which way is the direction now? Uh... Let's do this. Where I typically fly, the wind is more like this. So I'm either being pushed away from me, or I'm be I'm having the the plane being pushed towards me. And that's when you got to be more careful. Yeah, learning to hair your land in the wind. That's a good place to do it. So if I'm flying and I notice everything's being pushed away from me, like I am now, so if I'm doing rollers, I'm going to slowly drift away from myself, you know, that's still okay, because you still have a headwind. Or not necessarily headwind, but, you know, this would be good for maybe learning uh, harriers or inverted harriers. Inverted harriers, definitely, would be a good one to learn if the wind's kind of blowing away from you, like if the wind's to your back. You know, rollers... I, I like doing rollers with the wind like this so I can just kind of sit there in one spot. You know, hovering is going to suck because you're going be, to be blown away. And, of course, it's, uh, it's the same thing, you know, practicing precision in the wind. So if you're going to do some precision flying. So if I'm going to do like a, a four-point roll is knowing how to make those small corrections in the wind. That's some big stuff right there. And you don't even have to be flying low. It's just... That's some def that's some stuff to practice in the wind, for sure. The wind in our place is quite turbulent since I'm near the sea and there's lots of trees. I literally buffets your plane up and down. Yeah, that's, that's when wind isn't fun. Turbulent air is... It stinks. You know. But... You know, you may not be able to fly as low, but you can kind of maybe find that height where you might not get as much turbulent. I'm not too sure. Yeah, stationary st snake would be pretty cool. Not quite enough wind. See, I, when I first got my crack deck, I was flying it in about 10 mile per hour winds, and you could just, it was fun, but it kind of sucked at the same time. Like, you'd be flying the crack deck, and you'd be, like, doing full throttle knife edge, like, into the wind, and then you'd come back up and just be all the way, like, a mile away. So, yeah, know, know where you're, like, the direction and all that stuff really can help you in some ways, so don't be afraid of the wind. When I was doing competitions, it would always kind of stink. You'd, you'd practice in perfect conditions at home, and then you'd show up to XFC, and it was like a 40-mile-per-hour wind sideways. And it just it literally was a completely different flight. But it is about time for me to wrap this up. Getting there. Your boy's hungry. But I think it was a pretty good stream. Uh, thanks everyone for coming out. Gulf Coast here. Calm at 10 p.m. sometimes. Yeah, I mean, 
where I used to live was pretty calm a lot. Where I am now, we almost always have about a 7 to 10 mile per hour wind. So it's just something you got to live and learn with. But uh, thanks for everyone for coming out. Uh, share the stream if you want. Make sure you're watching the Park Flyer freestyle competitions. Check out my last two videos if you don't mind. Um, I might stream this weekend at some point. We'll see. But uh, it's dinner time. Hopefully no one got too offended by me calling uh, Hobby King's planes crap. But they are. Kind of. So. Oh well. I'll see you guys next time. Have some good flights. Check out my videos. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, you can always post in the thread on RC Groups or the How To 3D Facebook page. Um, two really good spots. Yep, I, I'm looking forward to that video too. Hopefully, once the weather warms up a little bit, I can do some due diligence and make a good video for that. Put a lot of effort. So that's definitely on the way. Good night, everyone. And uh, fly low.